In part one, we built this simple IK rig here with a simple controller to move the hand and a simple controller to rotate the entire arm of the rig and then a pull vector. Today, we're just gonna clean it up. Uh, we're gonna put everything into bone groups. I'm gonna add some controls and we're gonna add some more bones to these fingers here to get them moving on this robot claw. Let's get right to it. I'm gonna go to object mode and I'm gonna shift select this claw. I'm gonna go view, local view, toggle local view. You can also do this with the backslash on the number pad. So if I just go to side view or write orthographic, under annotations, I'll just draw what I wanna do here. I wanna add a control here coming to this point here and then one more coming to the end of the finger here. I'm gonna use my method of snapping a, my cursor to a certain point and then moving the bones there. I tend to use this a lot and I'll continue doing it for these fingers. So I'll do that right now. I'm gonna grab this hand bone in edit mode and I'll just stay in profile for now and I'll hit shift D and I'll just move it up. I'll hit G and Z to constrain it. I'll grab this geometry here and I'll just select the finger parts. I'll hit Alt Z to go to transparent. See, I have this selected right here. I just want to hit Alt A to deselect everything. I'm just going to hit B and do a border select on these pieces here. I'll do Control Plus, just select them. And then I'll do Control I to select the inverse. I'm just going to hide that for now. So I want the first joint to be right on these base right here. So I'll hit three and I'll select these faces. I'll do Shift S, cursor to select it. Now I'll just exit edit mode, select on my rig, select on that new bone I made, select on the head of the bone, and I'll do Shift S, selection to cursor. So that's in place. Now I just need this bone here to be at this hinge right here. So I'll hit tab again, I'll select the geometry, I'll hit tab, and I want to select just these faces here. So I'll hit Alt A, and I have another way to select geometry, it's a little bit quicker. If I hit Alt Z, so I see things in shaded mode, if you hover over geometry and just hit L, you'll select that entire piece. So I'll hover around now and I just want these pieces here like that, just so I get right in the center of that hinge right there. So I'll hit Shift S, cursor to select it. I'll hit Tab to exit edit mode. I'll select the rig again. I'll select the tail of that bone. And I'll hit Shift S, selection to cursor. Cool. If I go back to right orthographic, I have it right at that hinge right there. And for the second bone, I don't really need it to be in a specific place. So I'm just gonna hit E to extrude. I'm just gonna place it sort of at the end of the finger there. Now that's great, but I don't want to do this three more times for the other three fingers. So I have a trick when there's sort of a radial setup like this. Uh, I'm going to select the hand bone, this IK hand bone right here. I'll do Shift S, cursor to selected. And I'm going to duplicate these, but I just want to rename them first. So this one I'll select on the bone and I'll do uh, finger control dot zero zero one. And this one I'll do finger underscore control underscore end dot zero zero one. So again, I put my cursor right here at the center of the hand bone. I'll select both of these bones and I'll go to front view. Now at the top, I'm gonna flip my pivot point to 3D cursor. Now watch what happens when I rotate this. I'm rotating right around the center of that hand. So I'll hit escape to exit this and I'm gonna hit shift D R to rotate from that pivot 90. So I'll do that again, Shift D R and I'll hit 90 again. I'll do Shift D R 90. So now I have these bones laid out really nice around the hand and I'm actually just gonna hide the hand so we can fix the roll of these bones. So I'll go back to pose mode. When I go positive with the rotation, the finger goes in and that's perfect. I'll select on this one, and it's actually in quaternion, so I'll hit Control R, and I'll put it in X, Y, Z. Actually, I'll just select all of these bones, and I'm just going to fix the rotation mode right now. I'll do Control R, X, Y, Z. 
So this one's selected. When I add value to the X, it's actually going negative. Now I don't want that. I want it to go to the same direction. So when I add positive here and positive here, they both go in the same direction. So I'm just gonna go to edit mode and check out the roll of these bones. So this bone has a roll of zero and this bone has a roll of 180. That's why I was going in the opposite direction. So I'm just gonna add zero here. And now when I add positive rotation here and positive rotation here, they're both going in the same direction. Okay, this bone here, if I had to have, I actually want it to be at 90. And I want the child of that to be at 90 as well. Same thing, so that when I add value to the X rotation, it's going towards the hand. Same thing with this bone here. So I'll zero both these out. And I'll come to this bone here at the bottom. Now, if this one was at 90, I'm probably going to want this one to be at 180. I'll try with this bone as well. Let's try 180 here. And in pose mode, if I add positive value, yep, positive rotation X, and they're both going in. So this one over here, I can probably do negative 90 on the roll. And negative 90 for this finger as well. So here's the key to all of this. I'll zero this out. And if you look at all these bones, all of their X axes are sort of making this circle going around right now. So it's sort of this circle going around them. So that when I select them all, and I flip my pivot point to individual origins. Now when I just hit R, I'm just rotating randomly based on my viewport and cursor. But when I hit X, I now get local mode rotation on every bone at their individual origins. And I can move them all in unison towards or away from the hand. For now, just know that it should be 90, 180, and negative 90 going around. And it should be zero at the top on these two finger bones. I can do a more in-depth uh, series on how to figure out the bone roll. And I have a couple other tutorials talking about how to pick bone roll, but just for right now, let's just move ahead with getting this rig out of the way. So I'm gonna zero everything out, hit Alt R, Alt G, and I'll turn the hand back on. So this is one piece of geometry, and I actually want to use weight painting instead of bone parenting to get this. I don't wanna separate all these pieces. It's gonna crowd out my outliner here. So I'm gonna hit Alt P to clear the parent. And I want to make an armature to form to this rig here. But I don't want to deform with these bones here. And I don't want to use automatic weighting because it's a robot. So I'll just show you what I'm going to do here. I'm going to select these four bones here. And in the bone tab, I'm going to hold Alt and I'm going to turn off deform. That means these bones will not be added to an armature modifier. So now when I select this geometry here, and I'm going to shift select the rig, I'm going to do control P and I do want an armature to form, but I'm going to make it with empty groups. So now when I look back at my hand geometry here, I have this nice modifier added and under the data, this little triangle right here, I have all of my vertex groups added in nice order, but they won't move anything yet because they don't have any value associated with them. I have to go in and do that manually. When I do control P and I go to with empty groups, I'm just adding the vertex groups that have deform turned on. Remember on these controls, I actually turned deform off so they would not be added to an armature modifier. Okay, I'm ready to add my vertex groups. And to do this, I'm just gonna go into edit mode by hitting tab. And I'm gonna do Alt H to show all the geometry. Now I'm gonna do Alt A to deselect everything. So the first one I'm gonna do is the IK controller. So I'm just gonna use that L command. So I hit L and hover over geometry to select the pieces I want. And it's all these pieces right here that make up the hand geometry. Now with the IK control selected here, I'm gonna click assign with the weight at one. And this is gonna assign all of that geometry to this hand control. So if I exit edit mode and I go back to pose mode, I can actually move that piece 100% now. So it's not deforming, but it is assigned 100% to that bone. 
So I'll select on the geometry again, I'll go back to edit mode, and I'm done with this geometry now, I can just hide it. Now what I want to do is this piece right here, this finger 001, which if I use my L command, I can just quickly select that geometry. I click it, and I click assign, I hit H to hide it. I don't need it anymore. This piece here, I hit L, this finger end here, I assign, hide it, don't need it, and I'll just keep going along with this technique. Assign, and I'll hit H to hide, and I'll do this finger here. Now, if this was a more complicated asset, um, I would might do this in a different way. I might code a solution. Honestly, for something like this, yeah, it is a manual process, but it's just something to get it done. By the time I were to code a solution to do something like this, I could have just done it. So that's where you've always got to weigh how much time you want to spend automating things or just sort of getting the project done. So I've assigned everything. I'll hit Alt-H to show it. I'll hit Tab, and I'll move this. Yep, that's working out. All these fingers, I'll just select them all. And I'll do RX just to test it. Yeah, that's looking cool. But last thing I have to do is just parent those bones to this IK controller here. So I'll select them all, going around this ring right here of finger bones. I'll shift select the IK controller. I'll hit tab and I'll do control P, keep offset. Now I have that whole hand moving. So now I can go view and I can toggle local view because I don't need to be in that view anymore. So we're done with that. We've added those to form bones. My rig is pretty much ready to go. I just want to put things into bone groups, hide some bones, and add some controllers. Select on the two IK bones here. And I'll go to bone groups, and I'm going to add two bone groups. I'll call this one IK, and the second one I'll call controls. So the IK, I'm just going to do blue theme color set. And I'll just assign them. And I'm just going to move them by hitting M. And I can, here, I'll do it in the viewport. I can hit M and change bone layers. I'm just going to move them to this very last layer here because I don't want to see them, and the animator never needs to see them as well. Then I'll select everything else here, and under the controls, I'll assign them, and I'm just going to make that red. Now I have these axes turned on under my uh, skeleton here for viewport display under the armature panel. I don't need that on anymore, I can turn that off. Same with this in front panel. Actually, I'll leave that on for one more minute while I'm assigning shapes. So I'm going to add a geometry to this file now. So I'm going to do Shift A, Mesh Circle. And I'll just drag this down so I can see it. And I'll rename it uh, Shape Rig or something like that. I'm just going to grab the name and do Command C. I'll grab this bone here. I'll come to the Bone tab and under Viewport Display, under Custom Object, I'm just going to do Control V. Cool, so let's put a ring right there. I'll just grab it and I'm just going to bring the scale down a little bit by adjusting the scale value. If you find this really touchy, like it's changing the value in too drastic of a manner, you can hold the shift button and it sort of slows down that scaling option. I'll select the pull vector here. I'll come to viewport display and I'll paste it in there as well. That's okay, I don't really like the way this control is looking though. It's not really showing exactly what I need it to, so I'm gonna select my geometry again, my circle here, and I'll do Shift D. I'm gonna hit Tab and A to make sure I have everything selected. I also wanna change my pivot point to median point here, because now I can just do RX90 and enter. So now I have that new shape there rotated 90 degrees. I'll copy that name. I'll come to this pull vector here and I'll just paste the name in. That's looking better. That's looking a bit more natural as to what it should be and I'll just bring the shape down a little bit. I'm just going to move these out of the way and I'll make that the same shape as the hand controller here. Do control V, it's good to go. Now I'll go along and just do the finger controllers as well. I'll just do control V I also have a script sort of to do this to assign multiple shapes 
or to assign the same shape to multiple objects. Honestly, for me to go and open it up and do it right now is probably just about as much time as it would be to assign these shapes, but uh, maybe in the future I'll make it an add-on or something. These are a little bit big right now. I'm just going to select them all. And now I'm going to go to my rig panel and I'm going to turn off in front while I'm doing sort of a beauty pass on these controls. Come back to the bone tab and I'll hold Alt and I'll just drag down the scale a little bit. So the base of the fingers look good there, but I'll grab the ends of the fingers as well. And I'll just bring them down a little bit more. I'll grab the hand controller and I'll bring that down as well too. Holding that shift key to have a nice targeted scale. Uh, these two shapes, I'll just grab them, turn off render and I'll hide them as well. And I'll turn off select just so that nobody can ever really break them. Cool, so this is looking good, this is done now. Uh, I would pass this off to the next team. This asset is looking better now, and that's pretty much the whole process to rigging something up in IK. Going forward, I'll be doing more complicated IK setups, like another robot arm with a piston maybe, and maybe even a human foot in the future. Uh, again, this is just sort of an introduction to IK and IK systems and completing an asset in IK. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below or if there's anything you want me to cover in more detail in the future. Bye bye